perfect timing. Um, one would say it was <clears throat> Bob. Oh, you weren't. Oh, you didn't have your headphones on. I was listening to "Save the Best for Last" by Vanessa Williams. Oh, I heard it, and it ended right when we started. So I guess it was perfect timing. Oh my god, I thought this is gonna be. A, this is a good sign that we're gonna have a great episode. But of course, I see your intent to make sure that doesn't happen, aren't you? Well, I don't know if you are you trying to do some some phony shit like we didn't record the Mateo part already. This is also part of our episode Monday. This is part of I the know, episode. but we already but you I already know what the episode is. I can make this shit go south real fast. I can make this shit go but, south horribly. But you already know what the episode is. We're acting like you don't. Like, I, like I know it's what be part great. of it is. I know what part of it is. But I don't know what this part is. And you know what? I take it back. Uh-huh. Um your outfit is cute. You see me in this. It's my, it's my seersucker onesie. Oh, I know what it is. And I thought it was cute then. I think it's cute again today. Isn't that yeah, crazy? I got it from a thrift store. But you know what? It, it, does it looks like where, it. It does a thing where cameras can't keep up with. It's called Marang. Anyway, um, the, <laughs> the pattern is too close together. Um, but also, seersucker makes everyone's butt look cute. No one's butt does not look cute wearing seersucker. That seersucker, that is some South Carolina, that is some Southern shit, seersucker suits. Well, I mean, typically, no, seersucker is... Southern, for sure. Is it? That is a very Southern thing. A seersucker suit, for sure. It doesn't have to be a suit. Typically speaking, seersucker is shorts. Typically speaking. Right. But seersucker is a very Southern print. That's like a very Southern people thing to wear. I don't know how true that is. I mean... It's very true. (laughs) Okay, first of all, one of us is from the South. Why, why don't you take my advice on this? Huh? No, I've taken your advice on many from the South, and that should have been wrong as hell. And I, I but I also, just because you're from the South doesn't mean I don't, that you, it you, means that you, I know you more are, than you are, you're the aficionado on everything in the South. Stare sucker is a very Southern thing. It's like a Southern okay, thing. Okay, so then to take my word on, on, on my thoughts about St. Lucia and growing up in Brooklyn, just because you're, just because you uh, grew up in St. Lucia doesn't mean you know more than I do about St. Lucia. You, listen, and you decided, made a way more. And I have decided that uh, wearing, um, uh, Vans is very St. Lucia. I, I, I was in St. Lucia. I was like, oh my god, okay. they're wearing Vans. Talk to me more, more about this St. Lucia knowledge. Can you name um, the um, the two party system they have there? Bitch, can you name can you name the states at least two states that border Georgia? Just two. Yes, Tennessee, Alabama. Then I'll name the rest of them. How many states border Georgia? Okay, how about okay? Now name 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 two islands that that are close to St. Lucia. Bitch, bitch, the Dominican Republic. Exactly, is as I thought. Nothing. The Dominican Republic is close to St. Lucia. No, it is not, Bob. I said, name, okay, name, relatively name speaking, bordering. Okay, name, wait, is it, bo- wait, is it bo- bordering or is it near? Relativity, it, it, rel- it, it, relativity it, it, can be anything. It, 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 name, two, go, go. name two bordering islands of, of St. Lucia. But I don't know what the fuck border St. Lucia. The difference is you're acting exactly. like you know more about exactly. the South than I do. And exactly. Now you're like, exactly. But that's not, you that's just not my a, point. What point? What point did I just? Did you just, you just said I am the aficionado of every everything St. Lucia. I know everything St. Lucia. So go ahead. So I'm asking you to name the things. So that's the, I'm, I'm, I'm proving the, my the, point the, that you're the, acting the, like you. I'm telling you, Searsucker is not a particularly southern pattern. You're like, yes, it is. I don't give a fuck. You grew up is. literally all over the South. It is, and I'm like, it's really not. It is, and and listen, the people. And you think because you can name two of the five states that border Georgia that you, now I, I name the rest, then, you, bitch. Name the you rest. You asked me no. Hold name on. the rest. You asked me. You asked me something. I answered, name and now you're upset. The rest. Now you're upset. Name that the I rest. Them, so now you want to. Now you want to add other shit because you're mad. I named. Name I knew the it. rest of the states. <laughs> you're All mad because I knew it. All five states. You're mad because I knew it. You're mad because I knew it. You're mad because I knew it. It's okay, Bob. What's okay? With also money, you should know Jordan. You you should know U.S. geography. Okay, and and I did, and you asked me two questions, and I answered it. So now you're upset that I knew what you asked me about. This is this is this is wild, y'all. Bob is on some next year sucker shit today. <laughs> I also made it very easy for you. I made it very easy for you. <laughs> what is so funny? You're going through it today. What's wrong, BB? You're being so weird about you're like your 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 southern aficionado ness about how you you know I will say this I started off this podcast in a great mood and you have done everything in your power to make sure that I do oh not get to see that to fruition. You are to be shamanic me. You said I I, I have went at every turn to do, to, to and you you know what you you have made your entire living tearing down black queens. And this podcast is is. is 
I, I didn't realize they meant this podcast, and I'm and I'm the Black Queens. Uh, <laughs> the Black Queens. I am Black Queens. I'm Black Queens. You're a Black Queens Town Hall. You are. So with that in mind, do you want to apologize to me now? <laughs> I will do literally no such thing. Will I apologize to you about any fucking thing I, I, I've said to you on this day? Period. Not even wow. on the snowiest, fucking chilliest day in hell would I ever apologize about something I said right now on this podcast today. You know, literally. not apologizing doesn't make you fierce. But, but not but apologizing when you've done nothing wrong does make you stupid. Stupid. Yes. How does it make you stupid? For, for apologizing when you've done nothing wrong? Well, I mean, it's, whether or not things are wrong is, is completely subjective. So in theory, you were wrong and you were not wrong. Like, it's completely subjective. That's also, that's also when people say my truth. Bitch, there is no my truth. There's the truth. No, 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 no. There is the truth, but there also is thing, things being subjective. So, for example, whether or not someone Yeah, but that's is, being subjective, not being my truth. Like, truth, like the truth, like there's truth and there's, and, and, and there's fault. Like, it's either it's true or it's false. There's not a in-between the, the, the... Well, my well my false is that I don't... My, no, no, there's a the truth I, I, and there's I agree. The false. There, I agree. There is a truth and there's the false, but it's not the same thing as something being subjective and not. It's not... Right, 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 yeah. So Agreed. whether or not you Agreed. whether or not you beh- you behaved in a deplorable manner is subjective. <laughs> so yes, subjectivity is a real thing. But uh, and me, your but, behavior uh, is deplorable. <laughs> you know what? Based on a my you're, moral compass. Oh my god, I can't. I can't. You are an adorable deplorable. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? No, what is that from? It was when Hillary Clinton um, called um, uh, Trump's uh, supporters deplorables, and then they would, oh, people yeah. put their babies in outfits to say adorable deplorable. Can I, can I tell you a, a joke? And you tell me if it's funny. I think this joke is really funny. Please tell me what's up. I really think this is funny. I hope it goes over well because I think I hope oh, you laugh. I think it's really really funny. It's not offensive. It's just I think it's funny. So Hillary Clinton, when she was running for president. Um, she ended up getting pregnant and she was freaking out and she called up Bill Clinton and she goes, she just it goes ring, ring and then she just picks up the phone and goes, Bill Clinton, you son of a bitch. I cannot believe you just got me pregnant. This is the most important time in my life. I cannot afford to have a child right now. I cannot believe you got me pregnant. And then Bill Clinton goes, who is this? <laughs> Oh, oh my God! The layers. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Dude, you see, Monica Lewinsky. Monica Lewinsky. She tweeted something recently. It was so. God, I don't remember. Every once in a while, she really up. goes in about her. Like well, her she old... retweeted something. She retweeted something with the eye, with, with like the eyes emoji. The. But it was, oh, uh, it oh, was side, the side eye emoji. The side eye emoji. There we go. Yeah, I, I, Jacob probably looking at him tell us what it was. I don't know any jokes like that. You you know like little jokes like that. There was this one you used to tell that was really funny. I, I I can't remember how it even goes. It was like can you remember what it was about jo- or anything? Girl, not even a little bit. You know me. I have I tons of these. Anything. I have tons of these. I used to love growing up, like telling jokes. I used to. Oh my god, I used to just get such a kick out of like, I don't know, like tell what, oh, what is Jacob this? is looking it up. Jacob's the Jacob is finding the, the infamous Monica Lewinsky tweet. So someone said, "What's the most high risk, low reward thing you've ever done?" Oh yeah, and, and then she retweeted that, and, and it was the eye, the eye, the side eye emoji, like. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, to take honestly to take one of the most craziest moments in American history. You know what I mean? Honestly, she's part of American history. And to, to look back on it and laugh, bitch, go off. And I'm happy that I'm happy that she can look back on it and tweet stuff like this and laugh at it. Because how fucking traumatizing. Bob, imagine someone caught you sucking Barack Obama's dick in his office and you were part of American history for that. I mean, I'm also not as dignified as Monica Lewinsky probably uh, <laughs> feels, so I would probably make a career out of it. Like, bitch, I'm like, and, and I have a great going rate if anyone else needs um, services. Oh, my God. <laughs> but it is it is strange that, like, I mean, like, there's nowhere she can go where she will not be known as Monica Lewinsky. Oh, for sure. For sure. Like, so would you change your name her. after a while? You know what I mean? Honestly, I would definitely, I would from 100% change my name. 
Like, what, like, what do you do when you're? I mean, I mean, but she just also. I'm looking at her tweets. Just she tweets like pretty basic stuff. Like, think I'm gonna hibernate this merchant worker grade out. Hashtag fuck. <laughs> like that's, oh my god, is she really? Is that Monica Lewinsky? Yes, that is <laughs> Monica Lewinsky tweet. Work. She better. I like Monica. Like, like what about? Her? I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't know anything about it. I can't. I don't know much about her. I know she hosted like the TV show for a short while. She hosted a TV show. Yeah, she did like some TV. Keep looking up, Jacob. She did like some TV shows. It was, it was, it was I think it was like a dating show. I was, it was, I think it was like The Bachelor. Or I think, I think it was something like The Bachelor. And she ended up like. I mean, she, she has a, a she has a million. Fo- what? What do you say, Jacob? She had a bag line. She had a, a line of bags, apparently. I mean, I think she, she has just, a million followers. I mean, she's oh, she's Monica fucking Lewinsky. I mean, like she like she's Louise. Like she has the ability to like make an iconic tweet with just and, and like and everyone knows what the fuck she's talking about. But it's also probably really fucking stressful. It probably honestly. I mean, maybe at this point she has to laugh about it. But who knows if she's even really laughing? I mean, you know what I mean. She, uh, true. But she's choosing to laugh on Twitter, so I want to encourage Miss Monica Lewinsky to live her life and fucking work. You gotta work, Monica. You, you, you Sorry, I, I was. I got. I, I I got caught up trying to read her tweets. I'm like so intrigued now by Monica Lewinsky. Like, yeah, now there's gonna be a whole episode about Monica Lewinsky, which is like she's probably like, bitch, leave my name out, out of your, out your fucking mouth. mouth. Anyway, you today. Um, the hottest president. I mean, Barack yeah. Obama's. I mean, Barack Obama is t- bitch after the presidency. He's still t- after the presidency. Because most times, presidents come out come out of the presidency looking decrepit. Like their bodies are, their faces, everything is just ruined. Because I mean, it is. I probably they look a, decrepit. A they look less. older, and Barack Obama definitely aged. Barack Obama aged significantly during his presidency. Yeah, it's a very like, stressful job. Those eight years got him together. <laughs> Yeah, but um, Barack Obama looks hot. There's pictures of him in Hawaii he came up the other day, and I was like, "Damn, Barack! All right." Mm. Um, for me, I mean, it's probably Barack Obama. I also think that was that that um, Abraham Lincoln was kind of hot. Ew, he was notorious for being ugly. That's like a thing. Yeah, but for you, to to you, bitch. My truth, my truth. I think Abraham Lincoln's kind of cute. You don't think so? A little bit. No. He was Abraham Lincoln would ugly. be he would be a um a, a, he was six four yeah I, I didn't know he was very tall which I think is very hot but I can't forgive that face Mm-mm. I mean maybe the face is a little crunchy but I just think he he could have been he could have turned it old Lincoln do you know who do you know who we don't who do we who we do not have to debate about their sexiness is Mateo fucking Lane Mateo posted this picture the other day of him in his underwear. And I mean, every vein, every muscle, every everything was just chiseled and just, Mateo is, I say this all the time and I mean it, he has the body of, a, of an Adonis. It's like a Greek sculpture. Well, Mateo, um, well, I wish, I, well, well, at some point we should talk to Mateo about um, his thought Instagram journey because it's been like a whole, it's been a whole thing for him because he, he went through a moment where he was like, he didn't feel comfortable being thotty on Instagram, then he was comfortable being thotty on Instagram, and then like people were shaming him for being thotty on Instagram. Bitch, if you got it, flaunt it. That's what that's, You're what, that's what my mother You're an Instagram thought. I'm not like a full Instagram thought. Like I dabble. I don't like I don't thought I don't I don't thought thought. Money, you I like are dabble. A, you are an Instagram thought. No, Instagram thoughts post that shit all the time. I post like once every like five months I post something. Yeah. Money, you post Jacob, it full I, on nudity. Full nudity on Instagram. That is thought. Yeah, like you don't one video. One video. Like, I posted it like two months ago. And what was it? Before that, when was the, when was the last one? Exactly. Non-existent. No, bitch, when was the last one I posted one? That's someone who's not an Instagram thought. That's someone who's not an Instagram thought mistake. Like, so I also, I, Instagram what? thoughtism is not black and white. Okay? It is, there are, there, there are scales to the thoughtiness. Okay, here's the question. How many people do you have to kill before you're a murderer? <laughs> That's not the same thing. How many, just answer that question. How many people before you're a murderer? Well, one would how argue many, you. How many banks do you have to rob for your bank robber? How many? 
one would argue how many so you so you 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 kill insects are you an animal murderer you're yeah, killing kill animals insects. yeah i'm an insect killer for sure so, so you're an, I'm so, an insect no killer. but but insects are part of the animal kingdom so that means that you are so that means that you kill animals yeah by that same sure. logic 100 so you kill animals one openly. no one's arguing 100 percent now can we move on? Are you now your next ramp up, right? No. So okay, so I'm so I'm an animal I'm an animal killer. Uh, bank robbers, one bank, one bank, one time. Monet nudity every couple of months. You're not a thought. Every uh, yeah, I, See, I'm that's, not that's a thought. Different. You're a murderer. You're not a you're not a serial killer. That's a whole different thing. But you are indeed a murderer. And I think, in my humble opinion, I think you're an Instagram thought. And if you guys did not believe me, then. Um, you go just go check out Monet's Instagram post. I I'm still gagged that um, we that we that we live in a world where, um, where. Well, I'm excited. To, maybe if if we remember, we can ask Mateo if I'm Instagram. I mean, we already filmed that part, so we can't remember. But <laughs> all right, let's let's we'll be right back, right, y'all. Mateo. Welcome back. Anyways, hi Mateo. Well, how are you? Yeah, how amazing. are you, Mateo? We're not. Wait, we're no, not. Exa- no, we're not, not, we're not starting off. That's fake. not starting off. That's not my narrative, Gia. Fake. That's not we're my not narrative, Gia. Fake. That's we're not my narrative, really Gia. So when we have a guest, y'all, sometimes um, in the past we did it once with Peppermint, once with Bianca, where we do our first and someone else, minutes, and the guest literally just sits there and, and looks at us. It has been incredibly awkward. So I was like, well, we should normally, what we it's should start doing It's awkward for Zoom. only you. Say for you. Say, say it's been awkward for me because it hasn't been awkward okay, for anyone else but you. Let yourself. me rephrase. I'm the only one with manners, and Monet would like to have our guests just sit here in silence for 15 minutes. I was like, it makes more sense to have the guest and then I've go back to the I've done many podcasts, long. big name podcasts, and I would just sit in the little thing and listen to them talk. Yeah, because you will accept talking. anything. Like, like Nicki Minaj said, you'll drink the pickle juice for the rest of your life if you accept the no, pickle juice. No, it's like as you You were drinking the pickle juice. The guest gets the dynamic of the podcast they're about to enter, but you know what? Mateo, you drink pickle juice. I, anyway, I mean, I would like to point like, out that you're arguing about me not being able to talk, but y'all have just been talking. Mateo, <laughs> shut the fuck up, first of all. First of all, Mateo, shut the fuck up. You're our guest. Ladies and gentlemen, ask some questions. we are very excited to have our very close, beautiful, handsome, <laughs> talented, <laughs> funny friend Mateo Lane joining Sim Rivalry again. Mateo, there's this guy on our Patreon. Literally every episode he writes, this is day 49 of asking Bob and Monet to bring Mateo Lane back. He's like up to day 49 or something like that. It's wild. Now, it's I'm Nick. Nick could you imagine? <laughs> I'm intrigued by you saying our friend because I remember on um, season 4 episode 23 at exactly eight, 38 minutes and 44 seconds, I mentioned Mateo. Well, actually, you, you said, remember that. Your um, Jacob Ritz remember that, and he did that. Cause so, don't, so don't act like you remember it. Cause so, the so, so, so talk about why you said Mateo was my friend. And I, why, why did you say that? <laughs> why did you um, say that? So, man? so do you want to do you want to act it out? Let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> Are you going to address we're, why you did that? Um, said, we're we're, we're, we're going to act it out. We're going to act it out, bitch. That's your friend. My. Are you saying Mateo's not your friend? I'm not. I feel like a prisoner at his birthday party. What? Oh. <laughs> I did not say that. But they, well, I'll, I'll let Mateo know that you're... I'll let I Mateo, did not. But you, I, you did what birthday say. party did Mateo have? Remember you we did. got the pizza? And pasta. Pizza and pasta at Bob's house. Mateo, listen. Monet, Monet does this thing where she acts like she didn't do things she did. Mateo, I, y'all can rewind. I said I felt like a prisoner. That doesn't even sound like something I would even say. That's not like some Bob language. And we all know that. I felt like a prisoner on his birthday, but that's not like some Bob shit. I, I, re- I recently had an episode of... Oh, Seeing us with all of our black friends. That's all your friends. That's all. That's all. That's all, that's all, that's all, that's all. all your friends. Wait. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let Mateo know you're not his friend. I'll make sure Mateo knows I'm you not. very well. I'll, 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 Jake, I'm sure Jacob knows. Here comes. Jacob knows. Even even though you went to Nick's birthday, you weren't his friend. You, even though you were yeah, confirmed I, 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 the I was, podcast. I, I was a prisoner. I, I sat there the whole time like this. Well, well, maybe, I, maybe, I, maybe, I, to be, I was to a be prisoner. Fair, at, Monet and I were prisoner at Nick's birthday. <laughs> thank you, we Mateo. Were. Thank you, thank you. We were forced to go to the Olive Garden in Times Square and then all forced to have diarrhea the next day after eating the Olive Garden. <laughs> Monet, just a second ago, you were like, I would never say that. That's but not you, even something I would ever say. This, the insinuation I was saying I was going to be a prisoner at Mateo's birthday party and I would never. I have Mateo has invited me to his home But you just said you would never say that. You, you, 
You said that's not even something I would say. That doesn't sound like my language. But you but but about so Mateo. You about it. Mateo. About Mateo. Anyway, mm. Mateo has lovely invited me to his home <gasps> and his apartment and his life many times, and I always I love dining with Mateo. Mateo is probably my classiest friend. <laughs> Except when I'm uh, getting yelled at by a manager at a restaurant to stop singing. Oh my Wait, God, what, Bob! What bitch, happened? we were we were at the Caro Hotel in East Hollywood, Los Feliz area, and then we're having dinner. Is myself, Mateo Lane. Um, um, uh, whoa, whoa! Back it up. A few weeks we ago, were in you were town, like, Bob. No, you were here. You were like busy doing something. So we just had dinner. Anyway, Mateo, myself, <laughs> um, Nicole Byer, John Milheisner, and my friend Dewan. It was because because Dewan because Dewan and Bob were were were, were going to meet that day, but Bob had to do something for work. Anyway. Um, and then we all had dinner at the Cara Hotel, and then it was someone's birthday. And M- Mateo, did you say or did no? Nicole volunteered Mateo to go sing Happy. Oh, Ma- oh no! Nicole was like, Mateo, I would pay you a thousand dollars if you <laughs> <laughs> sing Happy Birthday to this people at the table. And Mateo was like, Are you gonna give me a thousand dollars? She was like, I will Venmo you literally right now if you go sing at this. And Mateo was like, Bitch, Bruh, the, done. Mateo walks this, uh, over. Wipeout must be uh, paying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mateo walks over, does a beautiful rendition of the Happy Birthday, and then um, then another table was like, "Oh, it's my birthday too." So Mateo goes up to that table and starts singing. And then, well, oh, Nicole was too. like, "Uh huh." Uh, another couple was like, "Oh, me too." So then by the third time, the manager walks out in his in his jacket. He's like, "Sir, I'm gonna." What, what did he say to you, Mateo? He's like, "He's like very wonderful. There'll be no more birthdays today." <laughs> Was, did he seriously say that? And, yes, yes, and one of them was a famous football player because Monet, the video that that John took of me singing, and my friend Donnie's like, that's a famous football player. And I was like, oh, work. I uh, sang to him in Italian. Well, I can't believe that. Uh, I mean, it seems like you were making the customers very happy. And this guy was like, can you please stop bringing joy to our To be patrons? fair, it was, yeah. co- it is coronavirus and people don't want people walking around. Bitch, have you ever tried, have you? If so you, you, you are, think Mateo's a super spreader? <laughs> if, you are, if you're at a bar I heard the word super, so. And the, and, and the beat drops and you stand up and clap. Security will tackle you to the ground until you sh- sit the fuck down. LA does not play with that shit. So you admit you've been in Hollywood spreading drop on some people. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. First, Mateo's not your friend. And then you lie about words you use. I never said Mateo's not my friend. It's getting hard to do this podcast with you. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's getting hard, hard to be able to justify you. I've been trying to get Mateo to fill your seat for literally years. So if you <laughs> bow out, this would be a great time to do so. Mateo and I would love this to do this together. So bye, bitch. <laughs> I'm Adios. Sure. Sayonara. Now, Mate- <laughs> Mateo, I feel mm-hmm. like you have been trying to con- also, I mean, at some point, we got to have Nick on the, on the podcast. We've actually never had we've never had Nick on. I think Nick has had said a few words. One time I did have Nick on a Patreon exclusive where we talked about the color purple and the people were <laughs> not, <laughs> not happy with Nick discussing the color purple. Wow. It's, the Vixen was right about you, Bob. The Vixen was fucking right about you. <laughs> no, the people were confused because Nick was asking really ridiculous Dumb questions. Dumb questions. Like, like, like what? at one point. So, you know, in the final scene, spoiler alert, I mean, I don't have to say give a spoiler alert for a 37 It's the color movie, purple. They've had but um, at the end of the color purple, um, they're in Celie's house because Celie now lives in the house that her father died and she inherits the house. And you see like dust kicking up. Like, like dust over a cornfield. And then and it's Nick like goes, it's clearly and the a dust car. is moving like sixty miles an hour, right? And Nick goes, and what the hell is that? And Bob goes, Sonic the Hedgehog, Nick. What the <laughs> hell do you think it is? It's a fucking car. He's like, I didn't know cars were invented back then. Bob's like, when do you think this movie was made? What year would, do you think it's supposed to take place? He's like, I don't know. Also, Nick thought they were, Nick was like, well, are they slaves? And I was like, oh, Nick, no. an hour and 30 minutes into the movie, Nick asked, well, I'd, aren't they slaves? And oh, we were like, my that, God, it's not 1865. It's like 1920 or something. Yeah, I, I, like, I, said, I, said, I, said, I don't I said, know. Nick, the movie's from the 1920s to the 1940s. He goes, yeah. I said, Nick, when do you think <laughs> slavery ended? <laughs> I think Nick is Nick is show, where is Nick from again? Uh, where in Pennsylvania? The middle of Pennsylvania, Middletown, right? No, I don't. It's, it's I don't remember the name. Anyway, of it. Mick, Nick is showing that they they, they clearly need uh, to re up on their um, African American studies in uh, in Middletown, Pennsylvania, because he has no idea. 
What I also remember when we were all, uh, you remember this, we were all at my apartment. We were all like, let's look at our hometowns through drone. <laughs> let's all Google. By the way, you should do it. Everyone should do it. Google your hometown and then type in the word drone. And there's someone has a great drone footage. So we did Clayton County drone footage. It was like, oh, there, there's the movie theater. There's the so-and-so. And, then and it has it, nice music in the background, by the way. Yeah, Everyone yes. always puts it's it like, with music. And then Mateo was like, oh, my God, that's that's the, that's the my high school. And, and that's the rec center. And Monet was like, that's that's the beach. And that's the so-and-so. But we put it in Nick's. <laughs> And they go like, well, there's the crack house. <laughs> First of all, all you, they didn't put music to it, so you just hear the drone go. <laughs> and you see, like, one shit street. Nick's like, that's where the priest lives, and he lives next to the guy who deals crack, and I lived on that street, and these people cheated on their wife, and they're cheating on... I'm like, oh, Nick, it's just so depressing. But I want to talk about, because you, you try to get Nick into comedy, and, you know, I, I, cre- I credit myself with getting Monet into comedy. You don't credit that one? You, you credit me? You credit yourself for getting me into comedy? Are you fucking I don't joking? feel like I misspoke. How? Please. I would love to know how. Well, when I used to, well Mateo, when I used to come to my shows, and she used to get really inspired, and then she would go to her shows, and then she would tell my jokes as if they were her jokes. That is not... Okay, first of all, a few things here. Oh, my God. Mateo, Bob swears... According to Bob, I was the only drag... He was the only drag queen I saw between the years of 2012 to 2017 when I got on Drag Race. The only, he was, he was my only drag experience. <laughs> no, wait a minute. I've been to both of your shows before Drag Race, and I don't remember Monet saying any of Bob's Thank jokes. Thank you. Bob no, swears, legendary. bitch. No, it's a it's it's a huge thing. Monet like and, and there be like there be like jokes that a I've heard Peppermint tell, and Bob was it was telling Peppermint jokes. So you admit like, you still jokes. Oh, hold on, so hold on. Let me, let me, no, 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 let me. So, no, so we no, no, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Continue. I'm not finished. Continue. I'm not finished. Continue. So so they're like they're Continue. like they're like typical trope drag queen jokes, right? Drag queen jokes that every drag queen tells, and then Bob swears he got them that that I got them from him. I'm like, bitch, that's just a drag queen joke, like. I they're escaping me, but everyone knows the typical ABC drag queen jokes. Like, if you if you if you tip me more, um, the more feminine I'm gonna look. Blah, 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 blah. Like yuck yuck jokes like that. And Bob was like, "You got all those for me." Like, bitch, the fuck I did. Now I will admit, I have I have I I'm sold, a, sold, I'm sold some Bob just... material. Yes. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm 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 impressed that you just admitted to stealing peppermint jokes. When I was like, no, well, I still bitch, you jokes from peppermint people. jokes. You was still, you no. saw peppermint jokes. You saw I'm Bianca Del Rio. All those years you did that show with I Bianca Del Rio on not. Tuesday night. Bob my opener. Bob huh? stole my opener. He used to go to Barracuda and go, homie about me, no caro. That's a true I story. I came out to my dad. It, I watched him. <laughs> Anyone who knows me knows that. I, first of all, I would never tell Bianca's jokes. Bianca's jokes are really intense. Just, that's just not even my sense of humor at all. That is just not my sense of humor at all. But Bob, Monet will get on stage. That is not Monet true. will get on if stage to say this. Monet will get on stage to be like, "Hey guys, my name is Bob the Drag Queen. And Bob stands for Big Old Bottom." <laughs> I got that joke from Oh my god, <laughs> you're ridiculous, um, Mateo Pre. Uh, uh, well. Pre drag because you wait, met answer Bob. this question. Wait, answer this question on the screen before before you move what? on. Because I, I want to see this. this. Oh, Bob, Bob claims, claims he started. If you see something, tip something. Is this true? That is not true. That is absolutely true. That is not true. The I, first I, queen, I, the first queen I ever heard say that joke was Paige Turner on a Sunday night at fucking therapy. That's the first time I ever heard that joke. And you don't think Paige got it from me? No. When I, I started, if you if you see something. <laughs> God. Tip something. It's, it's now, just so y'all know, the re- if you see something, tip something comes from this uh, slogan that the MTA started, which was if you see something, say something. And I would get on stage and I was like, and I would talk about drag, and I say, drag is like the MTA. If you see something, bitch, tip something. That was a Bob the Drag Queen old. And now Bob's so voice say- is haunting me on the MTA. <laughs> 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 Mateo, so you saw, did, you saw Bob. Post drag race, or did you? No, no, you saw job before pre pre drag race. And when you first saw Bob pre drag race, were you like, "This queen is going to be a star"? You're like, "She has some work to do in the comedy" because you were obviously well, a working comedian. To be fair, the first time I saw Bob, he was eating from a halal car out of drag on a street corner <laughs> and screamed my name. And I was like, "Huh?" And you're like, "I heard you. I heard you on Feast of Fun. You're Mateo. You're that comedian." I was like, "Oh, nice to meet you." And he was like, "I do drag. I'm. I think you were still kitten with a whip." 
And you're like, oh. I work at Caroline's. And I was like, oh, cool. And then I remember asking Caroline's, I'm like, do you guys know a drag queen that works here? They're like, no. And then. <laughs> not Bob lying. Oh, not Bob the lying <laughs> queen. Caroline. That's the <laughs> If but you then, ask, what's his name? What's the guy's name? The, 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 the Italian guy who runs Caroline's? They Lewis. Louis. Louis. Louis knows me. Well, and but that, Mateo did. Mateo asked, and they literally like, we do not know who you're talking about. So there was like the wanted sign from like the 1800s with Bob. <laughs> it's just, like <laughs> then. Then I went to your show, Barracuda, and then you stopped in the middle of the show and pointed me out to the exact same thing again. You're like, I know you. You're Mateo Lane, and I was like, Hello, Bob. So that was, all, that was the first time I saw you at a show. And did Lord. I think he was going to be a star? Yes. There were so many people in there. If the fire marshal came in, you would have been arrested. Mm. Now, now tell me about when you first met the Monet show. <laughs> first time I met Monet was at, not Galaxy Diner. Which diner was it at? Cosmic oh, Diner. It the, no, it was the Flame. It was no, the, it no, was it cosmic. wasn't the Flame. It was Cosmic, cosmic. Diner. It was, the it was cosmic, cosmic Diner. Yeah, yes, this Cosmic Diner. Animal. Yeah, that's when we were talking about um, Patty. Le- we for- we all discovered Patty Labelle's uh, Christmas mishap. Got oh, so, so you don't know Patty Labelle uh, did the Christmas tree lighting for the uh, Clinton administration, and years ago uh, it, it just kind of resurfaced. Like it happened, but then like it kind of just died out. And then like maybe like six or seven years ago, someone found the clip, posted it on YouTube. And the video just made the rounds. And it is just a clip of Patti LaBelle. It is a comedy <laughs> of errors. It is like, first she comes out too early. And yes. then next thing you know, like she has to go back. And then she has no singers. The singers show up. She doesn't know the words. The guy with the... It's, it's an SNL sketch. You cannot write an SNL sketch that funny. Because um, Bob, Bob has recently moved to LA, as you know. And he's like, I can't find friends. No one to hang out with me. Maybe you can give us some insight how, to you, how you guys became such good friends. We became friends the way Bob becomes friends with everyone. He abducts them and does not let them go. <laughs> there are no prisoners. There I mean, are no be, prisoners in my company. To be fair, I didn't want to be. Fr- I still don't want to be friends with Nick. But we were forced <laughs> to be friends with Nick. It was just all of a sudden there was this thin, skinny man. It was like the Slender Man it was just hanging so, out with Bob. The Slender man. And now I remember how you and I actually became friends. I remember vividly we had there was something that bonded us. Now I'm, I'm not going to use any names. But Ooh. I would just see what oh, has. Yes. Mateo has a very distinctive mustache. So I was so Mateo used to do this podcast called Feast of Fun, and this mustache would be. I would just see like the guy with this mustache, and then I saw the mustache on the street. I was like, oh my god, that's Mateo. It's actually a really great way to be like, like people would just recognize you so easily because of the mustache. And then I would, every time I see him, I would just point and yell, Mateo Lane, I know you. I would always do that, Mateo, Mateo, Lane, I know you. And then Mateo Lane started um, like fooling around with this guy that I knew. Like this guy that I just, I can just y'all, knew this can y'all guy. say, and we'll we'll bleep it out. He's the guy that's that's the Jehovah's Witness now. Oh that, right, 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 yes. right, 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 right. He went back. Oh, you went back to being a Christian. So, um, <laughs> so I was. So Mate, Mateo was like at the bar with this guy, and then I leaned in and I was like, Mateo, just so you know, I've heard that this guy, like, is crazy. Like it's like a sight gag. It's like. His dick. He has a huge know. dick. I don't know. Bob is so cryptic. Then Bob looked down and I had two crutches with me. And, <laughs> and I was like, girl, I, I know. know. <laughs> uh, and, and then and then so that was kind of like we had like had like a little bonding moment where like like giggling about this. And then we really started getting close because Mateo would always do the logo red carpets for Drag Race and other events oh, too, right. where you where you famously oh fought um, uh, Vanessa Williams, um, but <laughs> and Wait, Dina what? Lohan. You bet. You, you, you know what you fought what, Vanessa. Wait, he'll tell the story. He'll tell the story. But so Mateo, Mateo, you know how it is, Monet. You do these. You do these interviews, and everyone asks you the same question: Who's your drag mom? How long have you been doing drag? How long take you uh-huh. to get ready? Um, who's your inspiration? Who's who you rooting for? So I ran into Mateo, and I just looked at him. And I was like, oh my God, Mateo. I, I, the first thing I said was, my name's Bob the Drag Queen. I don't have a drag one. I've been doing drag for seven years. I'm rooting for myself. It takes me an hour and a half to get ready. And, and I just like ran through the things. So then Mateo and I just started like goofing off instead of like actually being serious. I also used to make Mateo take his shirt off. I used to be like, I'm not doing this interview unless you remember. Oh my God, uh, Bob. I was that is aggressive. <laughs> not I was like, Bob, I was like, me too, Mateo. I was, like, I was like, I'm not going to do the interview if you're wearing a shirt. And that's just... That just is what it is. And then um, I gave Mateo some of his most memorable interviews, except the one he's about to tell us. Please, 
This is but, my favorite story. Have you never heard the Vanessa Williams story? This is so I've wild. never heard this. Cause that's that's because Vanessa Mateo do- doesn't consider me his friend. So I, I, really, I was to be fair, you publicly stated we're not friends. But um, <laughs> I I uh, was doing the red carpet for VH1 logo for the um, Divas Live oh, and word. like the Christmas Divas Live. And Vanessa Williams was there, and I swear to God that she sang that song. Um, uh, do you need nee, 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 my grown up Christmas list? Mm. And I was like, oh, I love your um, your Christmas albums. And she like she put her hand on her hip and she's like, I have two. Which one's your favorite song? <laughs> oh my and, god! And I was like, oh, my grown up Christmas list. She goes, I never sang that. And I was like, uh, I'm like, I'm pretty sure you did. And she was like, I know my own songs. I was like, well, I thought you did sing it. And then like the PR person just grabbed her and like she walked away before we fought. Mateo. I know. And then Shaka Khan, I kept getting the celebrities to talk to me because it's really when you're doing the red carpet, you're fighting to get these, you know, celebrities to come talk to you and they'll just zoom past me. So any PR person, I would say, well, don't they want to talk to the gays? And then they would always come and talk to the gays. So when I did that with Shaka, I was like, don't they, doesn't Shaka want to talk to the gays? And her guy goes, no. And then Shaka walked by me. Shaka walked by me and I said, hey, Shaka. She goes, hey. She put her hand on my shoulder and goes, hey, baby. And she kept going. And <laughs> oh, then my God. That's got to pierce, though. And that performance, allegedly, she was bombed. I mean, she did a performance with Patti LaBelle and Shaka, I mean... Oh, it's a famous could... video. It's a famous video. Mm-hmm. It is a famous I mean, video. But I mean, but I mean, Shaka's... We, I, we, in all of our... Which we're going to get to this little thing later because I'm very excited to talk about this. Um, in all of our debates we've had as friends, how have we not talked about shock the deal that is shaka khan shaka khan has done so many drugs in the fucking 80s and 90s her nose <laughs> she, she has it, it, it's it's a popular thing everyone knows shaka khan did a lot of drugs but <clears throat> that being said her voice is still incredible like she can still like yeah she can still sing like a bird like how have we not addressed this before she's one of those people that wakes up and she sounds good i mean right that's I can never. Can you, can you? Can you? Can you? Can you wake up and sing, Mateo? I cannot just wake up and sing right away. Yes, I, don't know I can. Oh, do that Mateo. Oh, Mateo. <laughs> I can wake up and sing whistle tones really well, but then it ah. takes a re- while for the rest of the day to come. Got it. I mean, I, so I used to go. There's this girl named Whitney. Ironically, no, Houston. I lied. Her name was not Whitney. Her name was Charity. Um, Charity was one Last of the name Charity first name sweet. Anyway, she had the she had the she had the best voice at my college. Like in the theater program, she was like the one that sang. But Charity would like sing karaoke all night, chain smoke cigarettes, get drunk, and wake up, and she just had a fucking voice. Me, it, yeah, I will I, I will stand next to a person smoking a hundred yards away, and I'm out of commission for a fucking month. Like I don't I don't I genuinely don't understand how people are able to like. Bob, I, mean, I just showed I have, Monet my 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 my. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you how I do it. it. I'll <laughs> tell you. <laughs> How I did it for so long. <laughs> if you start smoking in the womb, you're fine. <laughs> Have you seen the video of them of, of 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 Liza getting into a Tesla, and they go, Liza, can you can you still sing? Bob, do you think I turned gay yesterday? <laughs> Liza's in the back of a car, and a pop her is like, it's a Liza, Tesla. That's so important. Liza, we 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 heard you couldn't sing anymore, and the of all the songs in her repertoire, she looks at the paparazzi and goes. Dio, Dio, daylight come and you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> is that real? <laughs> yes. yes. It is such a, it just, Wait, is that her original not, song? No. no. And That's then the paparazzi, the paparazzi right. goes, um, well, we love you, Liza. And Liza gra- grabs his hand and goes, thank you so much. It means all the world to me. I was like, oh, Liza. That's crazy. That's crazy. But oh, wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait said, did, oh, my God, it was so good. Did, did, Vanessa, <laughs> did Vanessa actually sing the song that you accused her of singing? I, she didn't. I, like, Googled it right afterwards. <laughs> she, uh, she absolutely was correct. Word. It's so funny because when you tell the story, it's like you, really, you, you really dug your heels in the ground. <laughs> I just was so certain that it was her. I was so certain. I was like, and when you she was on stage wrong. singing, I was like, "You're a liar! You, <laughs> you're a liar!" <laughs> also, Vanessa Williams is. There's something about her that's very intimidating. I don't know if you all saw um, b- bad hair or what was it called? Good bad hair. Bad hair. 
Because she plays the villain in Bad Hair. Well, kind uh-huh. of. She, like, kind of plays the villain. I mean, she's, like, a, a, a quasi-bad guy in Bad Hair. But like in uh, just, Ugly Betty. She was sort of the same character. Yeah, it's just so good. Like, I really appreciate Vanessa Williams as an oh, she's amazing. force. Mm-hmm. I got to see her sing Colors of the Wind live. It was absolutely everything. Word. Are you sure uh, she sang that? <laughs> <laughs> well, Do you have a favorite we, Vanessa Williams song? I thought I did. Even sometimes the sun goes around. Is that her? Sometimes yes. the snow falls down in June. Z-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d. Oh, that June was nice. But I'm to save the best for last. Okay, I will say that June was nice and resonant. Resonant. It was present, and then the rest of it was just downhill. But also, recently, Mateo, Bob, show me. Bob, can we talk about this on the podcast? Are you worried about it? No, it's fine. We, everyone gets to hear about my my injuries. So Bob <laughs> calls me, and I missed the call. So you know, so oh. I got two more. I, I got two more calls immediately, and I was like, I'm. <laughs> yeah. so, I'm like, <laughs> Wait, you have to talk about this. You have to talk about this this thing. I do a thing where, if, but like, it's a courtesy. If I call someone, is it? And they it don't seems answer, like a bullying. <laughs> It, it actually, Monet, you're right. It is a bit of bullying. Like, it is. I, like I'll see Bob calling, and I'm in the middle of something, so I click decline, and like within a second, it starts ringing again. I'm like, what makes you think? Within the right. 1.5 seconds, I hit decline that I've stopped doing the thing I was doing. Right. To, oh, Bob, because then I think it's urgent. I always, right. it's me. I'm this Italian mother mentality where I'm like, it's urgent. What is it, right. Bob? Are you okay? But I was like, no, I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> No, when I always call because have you ever been rushing to your phone and you got there right as it stopped ringing? Yeah. No, Bob, that's a you problem. <laughs> so right, like, oh. and, also, and they call right back. I'm like, hey, girl. But also, if the, if I then I would just call the person back. You don't have to call me. So so uh, again, and everyone everyone on this phone call that's not Bob right now knows that Bob will call you four times. Bitch, you try no, to get in touch twice. with Bob. I only call twice. I only call yeah, twice. Okay, I twice, twice. Four nine. You know what? It feels like twenty five. And then, but, but then a text message you... from Bob is ice cold. The meanest ice cold, <laughs> shortest answer <laughs> that he can possibly give you. Or are you trying to call Bob? Hell, hell hath no fury by somebody trying to get in touch with Bob or someone who's not answered Bob's phone call. Okay, it is ridiculous. <laughs> it is. Now wild. I usually respond in text. I usually respond with the word "work." Work is the best text you can send someone because it says, "I have received all the information you sent me. I am processing it and I am working on it." So it's just like work. It's like it's like in in the film industry, which me and Mateo would know about. Monet, you probably wouldn't know about this. Um, when someone says copy, I actually don't know. So I'm about to say um, no one, <laughs> no one uses copy like that, bitch. That's the, no, no. In the film industry, industry, they say in the film industry they say copy. They, this, yeah, they, that is a. Yeah, the they film say, industry. I, it sounds. It sounds. It's it's a little antiquated. Maybe like for older people, younger folk gonna be saying copy, copy all the time like that. That's no. You, in the film industry, niggas. not on the streets. In the film, when you're at work, they'll go copy. Well, people in the hood use copy too. So, what are you trying to say? Uh, pe- uh, people. In okay, the wait. Hood does no copy? one use it or do people in the hood use it? Which one is it? Does no one use it or do people in the hood use it? Help anyway, back to what I was saying <laughs> is Vanessa Williams a diva? Would y'all classify Vanessa Williams as a diva? Yes. Yes. I would too. But now, is Kesha a diva? I've already said the answer is yes. <laughs> I've, given my, I've given you my answer. So one night at Bob's Kesha house, and her and Grammys, but Kesha and her Grammys were like a word with you. It was myself, Mateo, Bob, Pixie Aventura, Jacob. And I think it was one more person there, or maybe that was it. Me, I was there. I, I, I said Mateo. Oh, oh, Nick, oh. yeah. And then so it was like honestly, y'all, a legitimate three-hour fucking presidential debate about why whether or Kesha and Madonna are divas, and it was in Madonna is a diva. Madonna's, Madonna's a diva. diva. Yeah, but then you Bob try to throw Kesha in the mix, and all of us are like, "You're insane!" And it's like Bob is on the staircase, I'm on the thing, Mateo's on the table, Jacob is standing on um, the kitchen <laughs> counter holding his phone, reading quote. It was insane. That is literally the uh, how you, how our we all have different fighting defined. techniques, by the way, because Bob and I get heated. Nick just says really controversial statements, and then <laughs> and then Jacob is googling everything that facts. everyone is saying, looking up facts, 
And Monet, Monet is just, just like Monet just Baba. making shit up, making <laughs> shit up. <laughs> and Alfredo and, physically struck everyone in our friendship group. <laughs> and Nick would just sit on the Nick would just sit on the edge and go, "Well, I think Danny Kane, they're divas." Like the most, <laughs> the most. Right, right. And, 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 Pat, Patty, and Patty's Patty just red, just on fire. Honestly, girl, like I'm not even like gonna hear it. like that's not even like Patty always comes out with facts. So I was like in 1955 when Fred Ebb was writing that one play, I'm like Patty, how do you know all this? <laughs> but yeah, that is our friendship circle different. Oh, the Pixie, oh yeah, Pixie was there too. And then Bob, I'm gonna tell you, you know what? When Bob does this, and he swore he doesn't is that, do is that. that a, is this a thing I do? Yes. Yeah. When you fight, <laughs> what is this? I don't know. But you Listen tell to us. Me. You tell us. <laughs> Bob's usually in a caftan, standing up, using that long stick, pausing YouTube, <laughs> turning at us, accosting us with this. Accosting. Yes, accosting. Wait, so just so y'all know, so in my home. <laughs> Bob is such an old woman, girl. <laughs> old as hell. Everyone makes fun of me for this, but when you realize this actually makes sense, the Apple TV remote is so tiny. It will fall into the crevice of your couch. You will never see it again. So what I, and everyone always kikis about this, but then when you need the Apple TV remote, you can find it. So I take the Apple TV remote to a dowel, just like a wooden dowel. It, it is just in the, it's, it's like, a, it's like a, it's like maybe a two foot stick that the Apple TV remote just sits two on. Two feet. But, that stick is like nine and a half feet long, bitch. But you all must admit, <laughs> it's pretty. It's a bamboo stick. It's like used to like. Right. I'm like, like, I'm a, like, like I, so someone, someone can use that shit to make a, a bed on Survivor, bitch. Gandalf used it he, in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> he also was like, I want to make this look prettier. So then he whittled the end down to a point. But it didn't look prettier. And then it was just it was pretty. Dangerous. You duct taped it, Bob. You duct taped it. I want to make this prettier. Let me make it a weapon and then duct tape it. Wait, lean back from the mic, Mateo. Lean back. Oh, sorry, um, sorry. I I also okay. I also Monet makes fun of you because when I get in, when I'm in the, you have not experience yet, Mateo. But when I'm in the car, I I hand my purse. To the Girl. People. Well, wait, wait. Let's, 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 let's take a little break and tell us about your little weird driving tactics and techniques. Okay, Matei, you have not experienced Bob the driver yet. It is no, honestly, I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. It's too. insane. I'm a great driver. It's insane. Why is it insane? I don't know. I don't. I can't picture you driving. To be honest. <laughs> Monet, do you feel safe with me driving? I feel safe. I do. I feel safe. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I almost I'm a, envision you like Nathan Lane in the birdcage, like driving. <laughs> oh my god! Well, I, I drive. I, I'm a very safe driver. I, I don't speed, which some people seem to have a real issue with. Oh, I would hate speed. it. I would absolutely hate driving with you. And when I turn the steering wheel, I, I, I'm one of these steering wheel turners who like push your hand, your the, the knee of your wrist on the steering yeah. wheel. And does one of those moments. And also, I always have people who are in the car with me hold my belongings. So if you're in the car, and like I have someone's a mom, <laughs> like have, let me tell you, like you know when like you would get in the car with your mom and like she would sit in, you sit in the passenger seat, and she'll take a purse and she'll like pass it to you and just say like like to, mm-hmm. that's Bob, or oh is that, is that my Alexa? The, what the is Colleen doing? doing? Alexa, the machines are revolting. Stop. Oh Colleen did that. I don't know saying? what she, girl. She listened to us the whole time. She she started spitting out Vanessa Williams facts. Did y'all hear that? No, she did not. <laughs> yes. She's like Vanessa Williams' arch nemesis is named Mateo Lane. <laughs> Mateo, do you know how to drive? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a, a Chicago driver for sure. What does that mean? Yeah, how a Chicago driver? Wildly aggressive. Hmm. I would say New York patience, cut people off. I'm a perfect parallel parker. I can parallel park with my eyes closed. I can't picture the Mateo bitch. You, I picture you like Nathan Lane in, in the birdcage driving. I <laughs> no, I'm like to you. I'm like Corella Deville. The last scene with <laughs> Corella <laughs> Deville. <is> just... <laughs> with Corella Deville. <laughs> That was such a perfect image of girl. The coat is flying. Also, can we talk for a second? Okay, there are these varied responses out there about whether or not Cre- Cre- this new Cruella Deville movie is popping. I've not seen it. Monet, Mateo, maybe we should do like a review for Patreon exclusive or something. I'm curious if this movie is going to be any good. 
because she doesn't s- smoke, which you don't need to smoke to be good. No, also, you need to smoke to be Corella Deville. And I've also heard that her the reason why she hates Dalmatians is like a really weird origin story. They've really hyped up her like um, why she hates Dalmatians origin story. I don't want to ruin it for anyone. So we're not going to give spoilers. But apparently, I mean, Jacob, you've, be, you've got it. You, this Jacob just wrote the answer. That's wrong. That can't be it, Jacob. Is it? It's in the movie. I mean, okay, spoiler alert, spoiler, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. alert. We're going to give you five more seconds to stop, to skip ahead, like, two minutes. So, apparently, her, some Dalmatians knocked her parents off of a balcony and killed them. <laughs> <laughs> so, now she hates Dalmatians. How stupid is that? So like, this is like the Batman origin story of Corella Deville, <laughs> right? Except, except the Joker is just a dog named Scruffy, who, named Spot, who knocked her parents off of a balcony and killed them, which Can, seems stupid. Can I tell you something? Mark Davis is my favorite artist of all time, and he designed Maleficent and Corella Deville. Oh, wow. And I hate these remakes because I think it does a disservice to the original artist. And I also think that it's such an easy money grab for Disney, but they obviously have enough money and funds to pay people to write and create something new. It's just so stupid. I hate right. it make so like, much. Make like, make like new villains and shit. Like make, make like new Corellas, make new Ursulas, it's- make new Scars. Right, and stop ruining these artists the classics, who are... The yeah. Right, yeah, it really pisses yeah. me off. Well, I don't know if it's ruining it. I mean, I think that sometimes, you know, different artists take a different stab at things. I will say this for sure. If they're, you know, it's not like they're drawing it and redrawing the images. They're just trying to do a live-action version of it. Now, I do think that the live-action version of The Lion King was one of those things that, like, from a mile away... There are so many reasons why it would not work, and I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking to have animals who literally cannot show expression be like when, when Scar is like, "How dare you!" and the lion's like, "Girl, <laughs> <laughs> there's no like, more food, Scar." No. But I also kind of like, I, I just feel like they're taking Corella, and I'm, I haven't seen it yet, so we're going to do a full a full review maybe at some point. Maybe I'll just do it by myself or something. We'll see. If I'll do it with it. you. I'll watch it with you. But like, it just seems like, I like the idea that Corella Deville is just a lady who really likes fur and and just like loves fashion. Like, I don't need her to be a villain. There's like, in the right. trailer, there's magic. She's like the girl on fire. She There's a, there's like a bank heist. Like, I'm like, what's <laughs> that? The thing is like, it's just the lady Maleficent. Maleficent and Corella Deville were in the movies for like a total of twenty minutes, right? right? The rest of the film is about the the heroes. So these characters don't have that much of a background story besides that their job is to be the villain. So when you're trying to take a two hour movie based off this one character that only has twenty minutes, you're like throwing in all these bad. I mean, what writer was sitting there and they were like, uh, guys, um. How about she hates Dalmatians because Dalmatians murdered her parents? <laughs> and then a room of other people were like, yep, mm-hmm, this is a good idea. Yep, I yep, will yep, say mm-hmm. I do like Maleficent, though. I love the, Malef- the Maleficent movies. I think they're great. And Angelina Jolie, not sure of what accent she was going to use every take. <laughs> <laughs> did it change a lot? No, yeah, it the did beginning, not. She's like, hello, hello, pip, pip, I am British. And then the next scene, she's like, um, are y'all going to like get my wings back or like what y'all? <laughs> no, Mateo, stop. <laughs> well, Mateo has a very great bit about Disney villains. He just posted, actually, about how um, the Disney villains are all gay. And I can't say you're wrong. Oh, they're all gay. Yeah, they're all gay. They're all gay. I mean, it's, it's I mean, that's, he, that's, that's fucking, that's fucking uh, uh, Disney queer coding. Like, they're making all the fucking... Uh, Ursula is a fucking drag queen. Like, fully. Scar is a drag performer. Like, these are gay ass people. No, Scar, no, Scar is a shady I mean, not Scar. I mean, like... uh, 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 I mean, Jafar. Jafar. So Jafar I feel like Jafar right. is like. So, I feel like Jafar is someone who like vacations in Palm Springs. <laughs> Very that. Jafar is Bianca. He used to, he he used to be a drag queen, but then he gave it up and he just has his. Oh yeah, yeah that, that's what it is. Yeah, Jafar Jafar's like, well, I used to work out too. <laughs> <laughs> maybe each, maybe each Disney villain is the same villain, but just a different time in their life. Oh my god, shut that, up. Well, I would say the one who seems straight is Hades. Hades does seem a little straight. He does. Yeah, seem and straight. Republican. For sure. Yeah, is, he, For sure. is he like a crazy Republican right now? Yeah. 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 Tim, Tim Rice. Like What's his name? Crazy. 
James, James Woods. Woods so. James Woods. Yeah. Um, but Tina, talk about comedy because also you, uh, you're you're back on the road. You are back to traveling and working and um, telling all the fucking jokes. Um, how how are you? Do you have a lot of COVID material in there? Or are you like not doing COVID material? I know I do. By the way, I'm putting all my comedy on my Instagram now. So I love it. Please follow. But so good. Um, thank you. But um, actually, I, my first stop was in Phoenix, and uh, the hottest place on stage, earth. Usually, Phoenix is hell. Literally, people just running to their cars. But when I you when know I the got hottest on stage, place in America's Death Valley, isn't that weird? Where's Death Valley? I mean, it sounds just right. 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 Anyway, Death Valley. Um, but when I got on stage, usually my audience is gay men, queer people. You know, and so I get on stage and I have a dumb joke. I'm like, "Hi, thanks so much. I'm obviously gay." And this straight couple was there, and the guy just looked up and goes, "What?" And I was like, um, do, oh, do you not like gay people? He goes, no. And I was like, oh. And he was with his wife. And usually, you know, women are a little nicer to gays. So I was like, do you like gay people? And she goes, ah. Like, like, like uh, um, they just they just said they just did not like, they just don't like gay people. What I have a recorded statement. Like, well, you have a lie. I mean, yeah, I have the audio of it. You want to hear it? I'm like, yes. Can you just it lie. This? I'm like, just lie. I can put it up here. Let's see. It was. How do you feel about gays? Good or bad? I don't like them. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll see. What if this is? They were like, well, this is how we turn it. Um, it's really funny. All right. So, all right. I have not been. This is my first night back to comedy. Oh, you, you can go now. This is not. I, well, do, hold on. Wait. You can go, but do you like gays? And then she goes. She went like this. All right. You guys want to get That is so. Like. Wait, where where were you during this? Phoenix, the, and the audiences were great. By the way, they were all gay queer people. But this this one couple, I guess, didn't do any of the research, which honestly would be like going to see a Star Wars movie and ten minutes in being like, I don't like space. You know, what I mean, it's like you have to do your research. <laughs> I'm so, just weird about someone going, I don't like them. What do you mean you don't like them? I mean, I mean, first of all, no one hates gays more than gays. <laughs> So right. like, you are way behind, honey. No one hates a shitty faggot more than a shitty faggot. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, but besides I, that, comedy's been going great. <laughs> it's every night. How do you have having fun? Okay, so the other night I I had a heckler and I did something. I have this new tactic where I make it so unbearably real for them that so I, we're in the show. We're in New York Comedy Cellar. It's full. And it's really exciting because obviously we can do comedy again. These girls, it's, oh, by the way, as a comedian, the only people that heckle you, the only people I've been heckled by are white women. Really? No one else. Mm. That is it. It is only white women. And every single comedian will tell you the same story. Only white women will heckle you. And the if Nick you tell Smith them to be quiet, they will not be quiet. Got so it. front row, group of white women. And this one girl kept talking during my set, just talking, like loud, talking to her friends. So I looked at her and said, hi, there's a show happening. Can you, you know, can you maybe not right now? And then two seconds later, she starts talking again. So I looked at her and I said, excuse me, um, I just want to let you know, remember last year there was a pandemic uh, and we were all forced in our homes and forced to watch Netflix. Um, I lost my job and tour and all my money. And now that we're able to do this again, uh, why are you sitting here treating me like I'm Netflix? Oh, work. What, the what did she say? She just sat there and went, Ugh. and then of course it ruins the energy for the rest of the show. So I have to like work my way back to getting people's trust because I basically just like scolded this woman, you know. But I mean, I never yell. I just sort of like made it unbearably real. For I her. get a, that. That's similar. I was on set with with a girl. We're doing a thing, and then um, we had to like make fun of these. Shirts. <laughs> so vague. When I was like on set with a girl. We, did we had something. to we we had to make fun of these straight guys. So like we're saying jokes back and forth with them, and then the girl says a joke to him, and then and then he replies back to her, "Yeah, I bet like your dad." And then the girl goes, "My dad's dead." And then when people, it just makes it so. And I was sitting there like, <laughs> and then he goes, "Oh man, like you know, straight guy." He's like, "Oh man, sorry man, didn't mean to like say that about you." First of all, call it not not calling the drag queen, ma'am. Sorry, man, didn't mean to um make fun of your dad, man. She's like, 
No, it's cool. And it, it was just like 10 seconds no, of awkward. Cool. And I was like, this <laughs> is too much. I can't. Not my dad's dead. <laughs> I think people, when it comes to comedy, uh, they don't think, they don't realize how difficult comedy is. In mm. other words, not just the joke writing, but how I'm making it seem like it's coming off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. There's a rhythm to it. People watch Mariah Carey and understand they can't sing like Mariah Carey, so they respect it. But people see someone talking and they're like, I talk. Mm. I could do this. Mm. So like, I feel like there's a, there's a gen- general disrespect of comedy sometimes from patrons who just don't understand the actual process of comedy and how right. difficult it is. So 99% of the time, audiences are great and things are fine. But then you get that one person who will... And it's a certain type of narcissism to be in a room of 300 people and for you to behave however you want while no one else... like. This person had to get a babysitter. This person had to spend their hard-earned money on tickets. This person had to do it. And you're like, no, I'll treat it like it's my show. So I always, you know, you can't really be nice to hecklers. Money, yeah. how do you do with hecklers? Um, I, I, I usually can come to common ground with them or, like, make a joke. If, honestly. What are, you what are you bargaining? You're like, listen, I'll, I'll just, just, you stop talking. Oh, I got this one in, like, a, all a right. Kind of I'll, like if they like, 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 be like really much, I'm like, all right. I'm like, bitch, you have been talking since I started. I think it's a whole bar. I'm like, go sit at the front. I'm like, why do you have to be back here talking? And 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 Mateo's right. Typically, it is a a drunk white bitch, and then then it, and then if they will not relent, then you start making fun of them. And then or or back. Okay, this is back back in the day. I don't know if I'll do this now. I'll be like, I'm like, I'll, I'll walk over. Like I've done this before, barracuda industry, or whatever. I'm like. Can I like see your bag? Can I just see your bag? If you, and then they like hand it over. Then you go in their bag, and I'll, I'll take their money. I'll be like, "Bitch, you have sixty dollars here. This sixty dollars that's mine. <laughs> I'll put it in my tip bucket. And I'll give it back to them." And then the whole bar cheers you on and eggs you on. They're like, "Yeah!" And then in hindsight, I kind of that is so mean. To, to, to money, like, this is a quiet deposit. Now, when you're at the end of the show, if you're quiet, I'll give you this all this back. Every time you interrupt me, I'm gonna take five dollars. So you you decide how much money. I mean, I will say this, in, in, in extreme circumstances, and I mean extreme circumstances. Bob my- body slams people. <laughs> Girl, accurate. And that is a fact. I, I don't know if we posted a thing on Patreon, but I, I have the video and I will send it to Jacob to put on Patreon. Even though, it, it, even though it's there again, it needs to be posted again. So y'all see how violent and mean he is. <laughs> I want to say this. That was not a heck. It was. It wasn't like someone heckled, and then I went and grabbed them and threw literally them to the what ground. happened. Here's no. the video. This is the video. Ready? The the person in the front row, the waiter comes lean by, back, lean back, and they lean said, back. "What can I get you?" He said, "Can I have a vodka soda?" And Bob picked them up and body slammed them it on the ground. It is insane. That is not. Wait, don't forget to lean back, Mateo. Dude, that sorry, is not. That is not. What happened? What, Jacob? What do you say after? You're like, I am not a violent person. Oh, he's <laughs> like, Bob is, oh, I had the whole speech. This is not part of my nature. I will not get physical with you. And on that note, <laughs> I'm going to call the show. Have a nice day, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank Bob thank- body slams someone, then he's Mother Teresa. <laughs> right. Thank you for coming out. Uh, Monet Shane and Ms. Cracker, they'll be up here next. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night. But you were in the basement with a hat. Oh, but you were in the basement, and then we heard the music crack. We heard the music stop. Cracking up. You know when a sediment falls from the ceiling? (laughs) Dust comes down. Dust comes down. All the the water is shaking violently. The asbestos was in my cocktail downstairs (laughs) as I was getting ready, and then... And then we heard the music stop, and then I was like, "That's weird." I was like, "Maybe something happened with the music," but it was like a long period of time, and I was a little—I was like, "Why is the music off for so long?" Then I just see Bob wig halfway off his head, dress half off off his shoulder, and I was like, "That's how he started the show." <laughs> and I was like, "I was like, what happened?" And Bob goes, "Girl," he's like, he's like, he's like Monet. I just had to get physical with someone. I was like, "What do you?" I was like, "I was like y'all, like y'all did like Olivia Newton John into suicide." And he was like, he's like, no, he's like, no, Monet, I had to, I had to, I had to get physical with the customer. He was like, I cannot believe I had to get physical with someone. I was like, what happened? He explained the whole thing to me. I was like, that's crazy, girl. <laughs> I want to tell the true story. So I was doing my number, and this guy just jumped up and grabbed me, like, held me, and I was like, hey, let me go. And then the guy would not let me go. And he was like squeezing me. And I was like, dude, let me go. And I could not get him off me. So I was like, well, we're, we're both going down. That was the last time. <laughs> I've been phys- 
That was the last time I've been physical with anyone. I cannot believe it. I can that real. I was shook. When they would say I, I came, I was fucking shook. I was all shook up by that incident. All shook the fuck up. Girl. But I still did my, I still did my job. I promoted the next show. I uplifted my fellow artists. I made announcements. <laughs> not, not murdering someone and then saying, "Okay, Monet and Cracker, get out there." <laughs> but, but Terry, have you ever had to? Have you ever got in, into a physical altercation with someone? Like, like in in life, not just a heckler in life. I can't even picture um, Mateo swatting a fly away successfully. No, although you know, the other week it's so funny. The other week I got off stage, and. Um, this guy, this guy was. Go, we were like, where the bathroom and that exit is at the cellar. He saw me and he goes, "You like excited to see me?" And I guess he wanted to like share his excitement. He grabs my shoulders and starts violently shaking me, and I was like, "Get the fuck off of me!" Like there's a fucking pandemic, and the security guard had to like push him away. Was he like? And was, the guy like goes, was he happy to see you? What was it? He was happy to see me, but he was like hurting me. And then the the guy the the security was like, you can't touch him. And then the guy goes, I'm vaxxed. Work. <laughs> like, Work. No, no, you just, like, shook me. Work. Well, now, that is that is wild. Well, Mateo, thank you so much for... I just love you so much. I love Mateo a oh, lot, too. Well, so Well, before much. you go, Mateo, where are you, where are you touring now? Like, where can we find your, your current dates? Um, well, I just sold out the Bell House, two shows. Work. So work. And then let me read off. Oh, next time, next time I come, you, you, Revolta is on you, bitch. That's fine. I would like to take you to Revolta that you've been to twice. I've never been okay, to Revolta. Um, <laughs> I will be in New um, and the Arkansas Pride in Fayette, Fayetteville. Uh, one show that's June twenty fifth, and then Fayetteville I'm in where? The, there's a lot of Fayettevilles. The South Arkansas. Arkansas. Fayettevilles. No, Arkansas, Arkansas Pride. Pride. August 7th to the 9th, I'll be at the Pilgrim House at Provincetown. August 19th to the 22nd, I'm at the Houston Improv. And then September 10th to the 11th, I'm in the Vulcan Gas Company in Austin, Texas. Work. Well, make sure y'all go catch Potato Main. Follow me on Instagram. Thank you. Where can you find you, Money? Where can you find me? Um, I will be I will be sucking dick at the Eagle, New York City, um, (laughs) June 17th through the 15th. Yeah, I'm going backwards in time. Yeah, and yeah, I was like, you're going backwards. I was going to say, wow. I thought you'd be from the 17th all the way until next year to the 15th. <laughs> yeah, that's really impressive. <laughs> no, thank you, Potato. Thank you so much. We love you so much, Potato. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Grazie. Grazie. Ciao bello. 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 Plug your podcast? Oh, what, what oh, are your yeah, podcasts? Oh, yeah, Potato, your podcast. Oh, yeah, sorry. You said dates. I forgot. <laughs> I also have a podcast called Inside the Closet with Emma Wilman, which you guys got to get her on the show. I would love I would to love have Emma. Emma She's looks like the lady guest. from Hands Maze Town. Does anyone ever tell her that? No, she, she does kind not. Of a similar look. Yes, yes, she does. There's the middle, the mouth and the jaw have yeah. a similar look. I was like, damn, that looks like Emma. Do you know the lady from Handmaid's Tale is a fucking Scientologist? Yeah, and everyone, no. everyone yeah, yeah, she's a bitch. Curse the alley up in his bitch. She's a Scientologist. She is. She is. Oh, uh, in fact, let, let, let's do let's let's do a little Patreon exclusive about about Scientology and people that we know to be Scientologists. So we'll see ooh. you all later. <laughs>